Hey, can everybody hear me? Let's get this thing kicked off. So psyched to be teaching this, you guys. Um, so I'll just probably let a couple more people come in, but uh, I'll just kick it off. Um, so you're probably wondering what this event is all about. Um, it's being put on by a school called 343 Labs. Um, it's an electronic music school and production school based in New York City. Uh, usually offering classes um, online and in person. Obviously now it's doing completely online stuff. Um, I recently actually finished the mixing and mastering course over there. It was taught by uh, Abe Duke, who is a really great uh, instructor. And um, <clears throat> they're actually starting a new sound design and synthesis course next week with uh, John Selway, who is actually coincidentally going to be interviewed as well um, tomorrow. So um, you could check that out um, and the details for all that stuff at uh, 343labs.com. Um, in addition to classes, they do all these like amazing events. Um, they host lectures like this one, uh, Ableton user groups, uh, open mic showcases, and uh, they have these great track feedback sessions. They usually do them like every week or so where you can bring in a track and get live um, feedback uh, with people. So that's been super critical for my development as an artist. Um, and they just host these things um, uh, pretty much like multiple times a month. So it's been really great. Um, it's a community that's benefited me greatly. And uh, that's really why I'm doing this. You know, I mean, I've been with the school now for maybe a year or so, just going to all their events. And, you know, I just really like what they're doing. So, um, you know, in New York City and globally, it's just a really great organization. <clears throat> A little bit about myself. Um, I've been involved in music since I was a kid. I began classically training uh, piano at about like five years old and I've just kind of always just had music as a constant in my life. Um, I've also written extensively about experimental and electronic music um, for places like uh, Pop Matters and Tiny Mixtapes. And I'm currently working on a chapter in a book about EDM stardom about Dead Mouse. So that's been like kind of taking up a lot of my time as well. Um, and uh, as far as teaching, I taught a course over at the School of Visual Arts in New York City, SVA, uh, in color correction for video, actually, which is another area of uh, expertise I know a lot about. Um, <clears throat> for my most mu recent music chapter, um, m the Metamither Project just uh, released its first EP uh, back in the late, I would say, December of 2019, and I'm hard at work on my second EP. Um, yeah, and I uh, would just love to hear, you know, if you guys check out the music, what you guys think of it. i um, always looking to collab. I'm looking to do, like, remixes and soundtrack work. So if you're vibing on it, uh, reach out. Um, so that's, that's enough of the plug stuff. Um, we, we're here to talk about today about Serum, which is basically pretty much the most popular VST synth that is out there. Um, Future Music actually called it the number one software game changer of the 2010s. 
So, I mean, everybody is using this thing, and it's quite a deep synth, as we'll see. You know, it's capable of a lot of different types of synthesis and a lot of different types of approaches. Um, I like to use it to just make really, really crazy sounds, uh, but you can totally use it to make, like, pads and basses and leads, of course. You know, so we'll kind of get into a little bit of that. Um, Basically, I would say like 75% of my sounds are being generated through Serum. So, I mean, if you hear my stuff, you're hearing Serum quite a lot. Um, what I have here is a bunch of, uh, we'll go through the synth, but then I also have a bunch of patches that I just kind of have. So we can kind of dip into those as you guys want. Um, there's This class is actually structured to have a bunch of periods where you guys can ask questions about everything. You know, I don't want to save all the questions for the end because, you know, as we'll go through the steps of the synthesizer, there's kind of a lot to kind of take in maybe at and sometimes. So, um, yeah. And if you're liking this class too, we want to see if we want to offer more serum content or, you know, just you guys let us know what you guys would want to see in terms of classes. That really helps us to sort of form the content too. Um, I'll try to check uh, chat periodically, but... Um, you know, just throw your questions into chat and uh, Thomas at 343 will sort of distill them down so that I don't miss anything and uh, I've got a separate chat going with him, right? So we'll just kind of kick it off. Um, so this is the Serum uh, interface, right? Uh, it sort of starts by default with uh, just a simple sawtooth wave. Um, if you click the interface, it kind of goes into this 3D mode, which we'll get into. This is where Serum really excels. It's kind of like the wavetable aspect of it. Um, and I'll also be comparing the wavetable aspects in Serum to uh, the wavetable that's in Ableton, you know, for all of those that have, all those people that have the studio version, the suite version rather, um, you'll know that uh, Ableton comes with a wavetable synth, so maybe you just want to use that. But there are actually a bunch of things in the way that the synths sort of think differently and kind of differ in their approaches that are gonna be really interesting to us moving forward and to talk about. So initialized Serum just looks like this. You have two oscillators, so you can kind of pick whichever waveform you want. And then it also has kind of like a third oscillator, which is called the sub, which has like uh, slightly more limited controls, but actually you can almost think of this as a completely third oscillator that you can just use. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be relegated to the sub frequencies. The octave here, you could push it up four octaves. So you can actually hear pretty much like, you know, pretty lead treble tones. So just, you know, just playing our, I just want to make sure I'm on the right uh, thing here. Uh, let me record enable that. And, you know, so we just have just a basic uh, sawtooth wave, right? Now, as with a lot of other synths, right, you have your basic like analog choices. Um, in Serum, you have this like drop down menu called analog, and then a lot of people can go to the basic shapes here, right? And if I scrub through this wavetable position, it'll just start going through the various types of waveforms that no doubt anybody who's opened up any synth will be familiar with, right? Now, what's interesting here is if I click this, you actually see a 3D uh, readout of basically just what are called these wavetables. You can see that there's only seven options here, but um, these are basically Serum's quick way of guiding through the various waveforms. So I'll just play through those real quick. Right, so your pa basic basic waveforms, really, right? Like any synthesizer is going to have that. And then when you open up the second oscillator, you can really start combining these sounds in really interesting ways. Now, <clears throat> let me just go through the kind of basics of just one of these. Oscillator A and B are literally the same thing. So if we just kind of talk about one of them, we can kind of see uh, what parameters we can change for both of them. So just like in any other synth, I'll just go to my kind of sawtoothy thing right now. Where is it? Or I'll just kind of go to, where's the default, default. Uh, I'll just reinitialize this. Right, so we've got our basic sawtooth wave, right? You know, and then we can pitch it up a couple of octaves. Um, we can go semitones. Right, we have like a fine or a coarse pitch. Right. And we have our course, which uh, just kind of moves it up and down semitones. 
The unison <clears throat> is going to be a kind of interesting feature. This basically gives you uh, stacked oscillators. So if we turn this up, you can hear the sound sort of fatten, right? And the detune determines how much of the fatness you have in it. Right. Um, once you get up to 16 oscillators and then maybe you could have a second oscillator with also 16, you're going to start probably taxing the uh, CPU a little bit depending on what kind of computer you're running and then when we get into the filters and there's all these effects, you're going to start to see kind of potentially a drop down, you know, and then when you have, you know, a six note chord, let's say, you might, uh, you might start to see some CPU struggling, you know. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, maybe you could start with like a max of six or eight unison would probably be pretty good for you, you know, and basically just doing this, we have our essential super saw. Right, so that's already giving us a really fat sound. And now if we kind of go to the sub, we can add um, those rich low ends or we can just add a completely other tone in it. Right now, the cool thing is with the sub, you can actually go direct out. So what this means is that you can really get a true unfiltered sub. So what the direct out is going to do is it's going to bypass our filters. So what's really cool about this is you can kind of have that like um, contained low end if you wanted to. So if I turn on like a filter like this, right? Let's say we go like we do a high pass, right? So we're actually going to be filtering out the low end. Now, if you have a sub here with a sine wave, it's actually going to be retained. Not sure how well you guys can hear that on the stream, but um, that's, a, that's a good way of just kind of keeping that low end and then uh, filtering the, your oscillators differently. Um, Cool. And then over here with the blend, when you have things detuned, that's actually going to mix the detuned uh, oscillators compared to the uh, sort of source uh, main tone. So that's an interesting thing to kind of play with too. I'll turn this guy off for a second. I'll turn this guy off too. Right, so you can kind of hear uh, the main tone kind of blending in with that. Um, then you have your standard kind of like pan and level controls. We're going to talk about, we already saw a little bit of the wave, ta wave table position, which is what this stands for. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit more when we get more deeper into wave table stuff. And then this stuff too, I'll, I'll reserve that for kind of later on in the talk. But, you know, this is basically your standard subtractive synth, uh, nothing too crazy. Um, where Serum really starts to kind of uh, step ahead of the curve is with all these filter options. Now, you have your kind of normal filters where you have low, high pass, uh, notch filters, which kind of uh, cut out a certain frequency band. Um, then you have your bandpass, which are kind of just, you know, you could almost think of this as like your telephone filter, right? Like it's kind of filtering the low end and the high end both. Um, your resonance is emphasizing around where the cutoff is, just like, you know, basic synths anywhere, right? So if I have a low pass filter, which is passing through the low frequencies, then if I have a really high resonance, then it's really emphasizing where that, where that frequency is. So I'll just do a kind of subtle example. Right? Anybody that's played around with a synth probably dealt with these controls, and Serum is no different. It's got the basic stuff that any synth would sort of have. What's cool about this, and I end up using the drive quite a bit because I like really hard, aggressive sounds. If you um, if you push this, it'll it'll make the filter like just sound even heavier. And then the fatness, um, this knob actually changes depending on what type of filter you're on, but. Um, 
this will be a bit more of a subtle uh, uh, saturation, if you will. So I'll, let, I'll play with those two knobs real quick. So once we get into like, you know, these really fat pads and stuff like that, you know, I, I like to hit the drive a lot, but that's just because I like things super hard. So um, that's your basics of like subtractive synthesis. Let me take a minute and just see if you guys have any questions up at this point. Oh, Chad is asking where they can find the music. Well, I'll just post that right now. That's easy. Um, Metamither is the main hub. The metamither.com is the main hub where you can connect socially um, or hear the music too. Um, yeah, any other questions th on the, the sort of basics of the synth as it is? Just maybe give people a second to kind of ask their questions. Serum also has a noise oscillator, and this is also where it sort of differs uh, in terms of other synths. What you'll sort of see is um, you have these kind of different... Uh, types of noise. So not only do you have noises that are, you know, modeled on different synthesizers, but you also have these kind of different um, uh, kind of snare and hat and uh, kick patterns and stuff like that. And it actually turns out that the noise oscillator is kind of disguised as a sampler. So I'm just going to kind of go into, well, let's see if I have samples. I'm just going to try to find just like something that resembles something like a, I don't know, like a normal kind of sample. I got a lot of weird stuff in here. I'm just trying to find a <laughs> snare right now. Hold on. Okay, sure. Let's just grab that. So you can actually take this, any kind of sample, and just throw it in here. And hopefully that'll load in there. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> it's loading, it's loading. Let's try this. <laughs> okay, you should be able to load that in there. I don't know why it's not doing that right now. Let's see if that works. Hold on, let me just turn my oscillator off and see if we got noise. No. Mm, that's weird. It was working earlier today. Okay, well, let's just say I loaded that in there uh, as, you know, this is actually playing this sample as now a piece of noise. So you can pitch it up. You can give it kind of a random phase and panning and stuff. And you could also one shot it. So if let's say you wanted some sort of sound where it would just have that kind of noisy transient in the beginning, this would sort of be the way to do it. Now, if you just wanted like literally like the hiss of like an old school analog synthesizer, you could go into like the analog kind of stuff too. Right, but what I think is really cool is this kind of really opens the synthesizer up quite a lot because you can kind of load in crazy samples. You know, you could also load in samples of synths and kind of like layer those in, right? So already that's kind of like, you know, kind of thinking outside of the box a little bit um, for me for like synthesizers. Um, I, I should stress too, like, you know, I just kind of want to peel back the curtain on like just some ideas that you could just kind of take this synth into like really exploring like new kind of places you know like this this class is less going to be like a kind of sound designy kind of course and more just kind of like oh did you know you could do this did you know you could do this with this synth you know so i'm hoping you guys if you have serum at home like please like follow along and kind of dink around you know that's the great thing about this virtual course is like you can kind of just like blast music and weird sounds along to this course while you're kind of, you know, listening along. Okay, let's, uh, any other questions on the synth? I, I feel like you guys have that because that's kind of like pretty basic stuff, right? Okay, now there's a keyboard tracking thing too on the filter where you can actually see, um, like b based on the note that you play, it will actually uh, kind of allows the cutoff to be offset in relation to these MIDI notes. So you can hear as I'm kind of going up and down the pitch, um, the filters are kind of changing. 
the cool thing is too, like once you get into these really crazy ones, let me just uh, set up just kind of like a like a little bit of like a deeper patch than just you know regular sawtooth wave. I'll have both filters kind of going into that. I'll turn down my resonance. I'll get make that real fat. So here's your basic patch. Whoop, a little loud. So I'll start going into like these uh, crazier patches. Like they have this like phaser thing in here. They have all sorts of like flangers as well too, which is pretty cool to play with. They even have these kinds of stuff that's like, uh, what is it? Like, you know, these just get like more and more extreme as you go into these like 48. I tried to use this combs filter. I mean, it's just a super crazy, like phasey sounding filter, but here's what this one sounds like. Right, so you can really get some really, really crazy sounds. And you know, I'm just using a couple of sawtooths right now. Just imagine if you start to use like other crazy waveforms. They have these formant filters, which you know, is kind of like sort of syllabic in a way. Right, so there's just a lot of stuff to play in here with, and um, you know this this beats uh, the wavetable synth by quite a number of filters. You know, there's a bunch that kind of come standard to pretty much any synth, but then there's all these different ones. Like these are combination of like a high pass and a notch filter. You know, I mean, like you can really just kind of go into a rabbit hole and just spend a day just just in that right there. You know, just exploring kind of what different sounds are available. Now the cool thing is, yeah, like um, when once you get into these like wavetable things, I'll post. Um, a I have a link to this. Hold on, let's say I'll post it to the chat right now. There are all these like different non-standard sort of shapes that you can get. So, for example, just posting it in the chat. These things are great. These uh, DMS analog waves. <clears throat> I use these quite a bit because, as you'll notice, like the default sort of uh, sawtooth wave is just kind of like it's really, really perfect. But if you just load up like a mini Moog sign, for example, like you see how that's just like a little bit of imperfection there, or like this mini Moog square is not really an actual square, but it's something kind of much more interesting, you know. So I'll like literally, I'll just kind of pick one of these at like random and or maybe just like scroll through a bunch and just kind of start playing with them. And already it kind of gives me a little bit more of a different character, you know, than you would have gotten just with the exactly mathematically perfect like waveforms. Does that make sense? So it's just kind of like, it's just a way to kind of get that a little bit of organic feel in there, you know. Let me just check my notes here. Uh, all right, so this is going to be, yeah, one of the big ways in which um, Serum really differs. And people actually make their own wavetables. So you could make um, your own wavetable just with like single cycle waveforms. And, you know, it's just a dot wave file that you could just load in here. And that's basically what these analog waves are. Um, the cool thing is with Serum, because it is so popular, that there is really a lot of people who are making presets and a lot of the times they just give them away for free. You know, you sign up to their newsletter and um, you can just have their waveforms, you know, and like synth presets. So it's a really great way to like learn off a bunch of patches, you know. <clears throat> okay. Um, Serum also comes with a bunch of um, built in effects, which are really cool too. Um, let's just go back to kind of like an initialized preset. Um, I'll just kind of dial in something, you know, a little bit more, you know, just kind of a little bit more interesting than your basic like sawtooth, right? I'll just pick one of these at random. Maybe I'll pick one of these at random as well. So here's what we have so far. I'll maybe raise the cutoff a little bit, right? So nothing too crazy, but just a bass kind of sound for us to go off of. Um, 
The hyper dimension is something that is pretty cool. It's hyper is basically like a delayed chorus effect where you can set the number of voices. So you can have, again in here, a unison of up to seven. Um, dimension consists of actually four delay lines with subtle amplitude modulation. So I'm just gonna turn the mix for that down for the moment just so we can hear hyper, and then I'll turn up the mix for dimension as well. So it's a little bit of kind of like a chorus effect, but it is it, it does kind of give this other dimension to the sound. And here's the dimension. So a little bit of a subtle effect there, but you can imagine that once you have like a really complex sound with some crazy harmonics, that really you can get kind of deep into that too. Um, it has a, Serum has a distortion unit as well. Um, this one called like Rectify is just like really, really crazy, really hard, I'll play that. So that's kind of like a bit crusher. You have like your basic soft clip, I guess. Kind of like a hard saturator. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to play in here with as well. Um, you have your kind of basic flanger and phaser. Um, you have a chorus effect, delay. Um, the cool thing with these effects too is that you can reorder them. So for example, you could have a reverb and then like distort the reverb, right? Or like hyper dimension after the reverb, you know? So you can kind of like really just get totally different sounds just by playing with the order of operations um, in the effects. <clears throat> Another thing that uh, you guys might have seen is with the compressor, um, Steve Duda of X for Records, he sort of had this uh, standalone plugin called uh, OTT. So that's basically like a multi band expander, uh, which in extreme settings, this can really pump up the sound too. So these are three bands that you can kind of play around with how much uh, expansion is going on in each of the three bands. And then you can mix that down, of course, as well, always. Um, so yeah, I mean, and then on top of that, you also have another filter that can be applied. So let's say you were doing some crazy comb filtering or something like that in the main page, then you can go in and kind of maybe put a low filter, low pass filter on it to kind of harsh the buzz, you know, excuse me for a second. Any questions on anything like that? No questions, no questions. Okay, we're doing great. You guys are a smart group. Okay, so let's see what else. Serum is basically a pretty solid subtractive synth, uh, but um, he, the envelopes and LFOs is another really great place where it really excels. So I'm just gonna, again, initialize this preset. Um, and then maybe we'll just, yeah, we'll just dial in something, right? Okay, we got just kind of a basic patch. Now, Serum is really all about like kind of modulating a lot of parameters, you know, like creating a sound like this is fine, but it doesn't have a ton of movement, you know? So this is where these LFOs come in. Uh, Serum has actually eight LFOs that you could, you could um, hoist to other aspects of the software. And you can actually control multiple parameters with a single LFO. So I'll show you what I mean with that. So let's say we wanna modulate uh, how our filter cuts off, right, automatically. We can click and drag anything, any one of these LFOs over to, let's say, the cutoff, right? And now what, watch what happens. So that is automatically based on this curve, which, you know, its standard shape is a sort of up-down motion. Um, it will be uh, going from this is sort of where it starts up to where it ends, right? Now you can actually reverse that just by clicking on this like blue dot thing. You can actually reverse the direction. 
right? And you can actually, by clicking, you can just like make it a lot bigger and then bring it down. So now it's gonna go through the whole, the whole frequency sweep. And then down here you have your rates, right? So you can maybe make it take a bar. You can also unhook it from the beats per minute and just kind of have it free running in like a super slow rate. So now that's acting independent of the song tempo, right? Um, you can also have these kind of different behaviors. So like as this note is showing me right now, uh, the trigger mode, the note restarts the LFO, right? So basically what this means as as I play different types of notes, the LFO is going to restart. You can see that little blue uh, vertical line just restart every time I press a new note. With the envelope, watch what happens. It doesn't look doesn't look to be that much different, right? But let's uh, let's quickly speed this up a little bit and watch what happens. Right, versus trigger. So envelope will only execute the envelope, the LFO one time versus trigger, which kind of loops it, loops it over and over again. Now you can actually change the loop point of where the LFO comes in. You can actually right click and say S set loop back point here. Now this is super hard to see so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. You can see this little L. I mean it's like super super difficult to read but that is indicating the loop uh, turn back point, right? So let's see what that looks like. Right? And uh, if you want to, you could just add new points just by double clicking in the interface like this, right? So I can kind of, you can kind of create your own crazy shapes. The other thing that you can do is if you press and hold shift, watch what happens. So we've created kind of like a weird little step sequencer, right? And since I have a grid of eight and I'm synced to the beats per minute, right? What is that going to do? Now it's actually going to follow the song. Right, so you can already kind of see the applications for this. You could start doing some really, really crazy stuff and you know, not even inside of what you're doing in Ableton, you can actually sequence uh, a sort of step sequence with just your basic sound, right? So that's pretty interesting. <clears throat> now, what happened, let's get a little bit more interesting. Let's also throw this onto the drive, right? And maybe let's also throw it onto the mix, right? And let's maybe also throw it onto the detune and turn the, de the unison up a little bit. Now we're just gonna get totally crazy results. What I'm gonna do though is take off my loop point Let's see, uh, set, I'll set the loop point back to start point here. And actually maybe I will, no, set loop back point here. I'm gonna set it to the beginning. How did I set loop back point here? Okay, now watch what happens. Right, so all of those parameters now are changing. <clears throat> now, if let's say you only want to change the cutoff a little bit, right? As we said before, we could just kind of take this down just a little bit, right? So now it's only gonna be going within that very small frequency range. You could do this with all the parameters, right? So you can kind of tone back the drive already, right? And just like we did it for these, why not do it with the effects too, right? So let's take a new LFO just maybe throw it onto the mix of the flan the flanger, right? I don't know. Let's see what that what happens with that. So now the flanger is going to go basically from a very low mix point to a very high mix point. We'll take these off for a second. Let's see what happens. So now that's only going a quarter quarter note. So we'll do it across the whole bar. <laughs> 
it sounded pretty crazy. But uh, you can kind of see, you know, you can just kind of go a little bit nuts with this, you know, like, let me just kind of get this back to something a little bit more sane. I can actually do that by clicking this right here and just kind of do a saw up. Let's say we can try that. Right, and because I have it on the envelope, it only triggers that one time. Maybe you go to a half bar. Right, so you're already kind of seeing like the, the real power of this and you have eight of these too. <laughs> so you could just kind of keep going, you know. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is too, you can link multiple LFOs to each other. So I actually have a, an example of that right here. See if we can open this up. So like we saw before, I have this kind of step sequencer thing going, but then I also have this rising LFO, right? So I have both of those tied to these right here. And by the way, if you mouse over um, one of the LFOs, you can actually see every place that it's going to. And if you wanted to, you can right click this place and say bypass modulator. So you can bypass that so you can see what it sounds like without it, without removing the relationship, right, and the parameters that you've set for it. <clears throat> or you can uh, leave it on. So here's what this one sounds like. Where's this one going? Hold on. Filter cut off. Filter cut off. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. Well, we could just recreate it. One second. Basically, what I want to show is that you can basically I'll just take off all modulators. Cool. So let me just put this on there. <clears throat> right. And then when I put the other LFO on there, you could see how it kind of combined both of them. Right. So as we kind of do the envelope one, that'll even give us some more interesting things. Right, so you can kind of see like the interesting kind of combinations that you can kind of do. You know, you can kind of get lost in it a little bit. I didn't actually uh, talk about the envelopes, but these are kind of similar things. Uh, the envelope is your basic, uh, you know, ADSR uh, envelope that you'll find in any synth. The first envelope is special because it is actually tied uh, to the main sort of volume curve that uh, ha happens for your sound. But the other envelopes are just kind of, they can be... Uh, also tied to anything else. So uh, any questions on this so far? Getting a little bit deeper into it now. George, did we answer your question? I see that you have the modulating p parameters. Someone is asking too if we could draw in your own filter. Um, not not really. It really comes with these kind of preset things. Really, um, the drawing in the filter kind of comes in when you could actually you could kind of m modulate the filter through this. So I'd say that would be sort of like your best way of doing that. Is everybody clear on how to constrain these uh, LFO shapes? Just kind of drag them down like that, and then you can you can sort of uh, move the offset for each of them. Okay, let's try this again with the modulating the LFO.
Do you see how it's happening there? I'm trying to make it a bit more pronounced so you really can see this. Let's make this two bars. I think I have to make it a lot more subtle. So I'm trying to make the shapes a little bit different. Let me try this. Make this two bars. I'll make the filter really big. Yeah, so they are combining here. <clears throat> you can see the, the one of them, the first one is sweeping up and the other one is just kind of like taking over it. So they're sort of adding together. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's kind of a tough thing to demo, I guess. <laughs> Does that make sense, George? They sort of add together, yeah. All right, just like with a uh, wavetable too, you have this kind of matrix view. <clears throat> so if you click in here, you can kind of see where everything is mapped. This is kind of the same as uh, what wavetable has. I'll just show you that real quick. Uh, wavetable. Right, in Wavetable you have your matrix here. So that kind of mimics it right in here. So you can actually, uh, you can link like all these other parameters to something else. This is not something that um, I would necessarily recommend just like kind of playing around with in the beginning because it's so simple to just kind of grab something and just throw it on there and then you're kind of, you're off to the races, you know. But uh, for example, here with the mod wheel, um, this you can, let's say, set it to, Maybe we could set it to, mm, what did I have with the, let's say A volume, right? And I can turn that all the way up. And so now you can see here that the mod wheel is assigned to the volume. Let me just turn off this crazy filter. And you, you guys can't see, see me doing the mod wheel, but. You can kind of see down here, um, you can see my mod wheel moving. And then there's this tiny little blue dot that's kind of moving as I move with the level. So that's another really great way to do it too. And uh, this is also the place where you can like change the polarity. So I'll just show you what that sort of looks like. Versus both ways. Right, and then you can actually invert uh, the modulation or you can bypass that completely. So that's just another different way to do it. And you can also uh, change the strengthening curve on here too, uh, which, yeah, here we go. It's kind, of, it's, it's kind of finicky. You have to kind of really get it right in the center, but as you start moving it, this will kind of give it a little bit more of a bias and it, it tends to snap right into the center too into, for zero. So that's a really cool uh, place to do that. Um, there are all these other global settings as well, which we can kind of go into. There are actually two chaos knobs, which react totally differently, which are really, really interesting. So the first chaos is kind of more of like a periodic repeating, um, and it's more like bipolar, which is like two separate tendencies, up or down. Whereas chaos two has a different kind of like restarting sound. It's a bit more random. Um, I'll show you what that sounds like as well. Let's do that. So you actually have to set the chaos uh, here in the matrix tab. So I'm going to set, I'll just do chaos one for now just so you can hear that. And uh, maybe we'll do it to the filter cutoff maybe. And I think I have to turn the filter on. Thank you. 
I'm gonna try to get the rates. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get the rates roughly the same for these chaos knobs, so you can hear how different they kind of sound. Let's, let's see, we're around 28 or so. Okay, let's, let's see what those two sound like. So you can hear how kind of different they sound, you know, and I mean, this is like, I feel like something that a lot of producers haven't unlocked because it's kind of like, man, you could just make some really, really crazy stuff with that. You know, I mean, just I'll turn up the rate all the way and you can kind of hear at very, very extreme sounds like what they sound like. Right, so that's pretty interesting because it's kind of like these two totally different like chaotic things going on, right? Um, now down here too, this unison tab, um, a lot of people don't really know about this one too. Um, you can actually set the, the range and the width for each oscillator in the unison thing that we explored before, right? So let me just maybe get to another initialized preset and let's say we have a unison of something like, let's say six. And we'll play around with maybe the range is much higher so for my detune. Right, you remember before we only had two, this is just semitones, I think. So we only had two semitones of detuning. right versus 48 so you could really go crazy right um, now you can also set your your width um, you can kind of like kind of tone it down if you wanted to um, what's really cool though is the mode of this like you can actually change how the detune kind of works so we saw earlier how the 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 various oscillators just kind of go in a very standard kind of linear fashion. But watch what, I, what happens when I kind of play around with these. You can see that the different oscillators kind of show up, uh, they kind of end up in different places. Random is probably going to be crazy. Right, so that's like pretty chaotic and I mean, I, you could imagine like if you combine that with some sort of really crazy wavetable stuff, um, you could get really crazy results. Any questions uh, on this stuff? George wants to go through a sound to create start to finish making a pad or a lead. Sure. Um, I have a bunch of sounds here. I can, do you want me to just start a sound like right off the bat or do you want to kind of go through like a sound that I've created and just kind of like what uh, sort of principles I put together? Well, just with just with what we've created now, maybe I could create something. So if I'm going to create, let's say I'll make a pad. Um, um, maybe I'll use an oscillator uh, like that's a little softer, like the triangle wave, if I'm going for something a little bit more ambient. And maybe I'll try this forward saw. So let's see what that sounds like. Right off the bat, OK. And then maybe I'll hook both the A and B oscilla uh, oscillators to the filter. <clears throat> And then I'll set my envelope one 
attack uh, a little bit slower. The cool thing is too with the, oh, oops, I'm on the wrong envelope. Um, <clears throat> the cool thing is too, you can just grab these kinds of things too. So <clears throat> sometimes it's better just to kind of like, you know, play numerically, but sometimes it's nice to just grab the points. So Serum allows you the option to do that. And you could see that you can create a real bend in it too. So let's see what this sounds like. Oh, it's getting a little patty already. I'll choose one of my sub oscillators. Maybe I'll go direct out on this one and maybe kick it down an octave. Maybe I'll put some noise in there just for fun. Maybe a Jupiter 106. Cool. <clears throat> you know me, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for the drive. And for this, I want it to just like kind of really slowly evolve. So I'm gonna throw one of my LFOs on there and maybe start it there. Maybe I'll go all the way to the top. Maybe I'll have that take two bars or so. Oh, and let's right. So I had it on off mode here. So that's like not paying attention to the LFO at all. This is actually a really cool feature because sometimes you sort of want a little bit more randomness in your in your sound so that like you know every sound doesn't trigger at the exact same way with the exact same LFO hitting every time so the off is kind of it's kind of like a misleading thing it should almost be like a free run right because it's just kind of it's just running all the time and it has you know I have no idea where it is so it's going to trigger at completely kind of random-ish points based on what I'm playing but for this maybe I'll just go with the trigger or actually I'll just do the envelope because I just wanted to execute once maybe And maybe I'll throw it on the drive too. Why not, right? Actually, maybe I'll start a new LFO. I'll put that on the drive, but then I'll only go, I'll go a bar with that and I will trigger that. So it'll kind of, it'll loop through twice. Right, so what you saw there is already I'm having a lot of variation because I have two bars for the filter, but for one of these, I have one bar for the drive, right? So you're already getting kind of a different variation. Now, just to, just to kind of play with it even more, maybe I'll take this off of the BPM and I'll just do like a really slow, low frequency oscillator. So now this is not tied to the beats per minute at all. So I think it's just, you know, it's gonna be kind of a little bit even more free running. I'm trying to kind of get it off sync so you guys can see it sort of, you know, they're kind of operating independently of each other, you know. Um, yeah, that's how I would kind of try something like that. Um, and then let's just kind of go into this, the effects stuff that we have. Maybe I would add a little bit of a chorus. It's getting super loud. You can hear how much that multiband changes it, right? Like this is before. And then with the compressor, it's a completely different sound, right? So you can kind of play around with that. Um, let's see, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, just because it's a pad, I wouldn't go with the delay. 
I never can like kind of make the flanger like sound good, honestly. You know, it's just kind of one of those effects that unless it's used extremely subtly, it's like everybody knows that you've got a flanger on it, you know? Maybe we'll try the hyper dimension though. What do you guys think? Should we try to go for a lead, lead instrument? I'll just initialize from the get-go. <clears throat> I almost kind of want to do like a little synth wavy kind of thing. I'll just again, just totally pick oscillators by random and just kind of click through with something that maybe I like. I see that I have two pulses. I'm Probably not going to be into that, but we'll see. A lot of the times with leads, I'll actually turn my uh, sustain down because then at least you have this kind of like not necessarily like a pluck sound, but it just kind of like, it reaches its apex and then it kind of calms down. So you can kind of actually read when the notes are kind of hitting. If you kind of have your sustain all the way up, I just feel like it's, uh, there's not enough kind of dynamic range almost in the sound, if that makes sense. It's a nice kind of like plucky thing. I, I'll probably put a little delay on that. You can filter where the delay hits. So there's no low end in that now at all, which is nice. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I just did it by accident. If you click this, you'll actually see what the sound is doing. And if you click again, you get the phase response. You know, just, just to be complete, just to sh show you what that is. I don't know how useful that is going to be to you guys, but yeah. Maybe I'll just do like a low frequency oscillator where it just kind of decays like really quickly. Let's try that. And I'll just do it again on a uh, trigger. That's a kind of like plucky, ethereal kind of lead <laughs> for you, right? Sounds dope when you added some drive for more fatness to it. Yeah, I go I go to this all the time, honestly. Um, another interesting thing I've started kind of playing around with um, is what if you LFO'd the mix of the filter, right? So just check this out. Let's see what this sounds like. Right, so it's kind of mixing the filtered version and then the non-filtered version, which is totally crazy, I think, you know? And what if we did that in reverse, so it actually put more of the filter in there? Maybe it doesn't work, doesn't work as well. I liked it the other way. I could just kind of mellows out or increases the sound a little bit.
I mean, I could kind of dink around on this all the time, <laughs> but um, yeah, let's let's keep uh, moving forward because we haven't even gone to the wavetable stuff, which is really like I think you guys are going to be blown away by that. Um, so we went through, let's see, the wavetables and stuff like that. So yeah, I've actually downloaded a bunch of these uh, access virus um, wavetables, which you know totally available to you guys if you just search. So. Like we talked about in the beginning, <clears throat> let me just turn off this sub, let me turn off this oscillator, and for now, I'll just turn off the filter. So when I click this, this is going to be what the wavetable is, right? So when I click this and I scroll through the wavetable position, you're actually seeing the wave change as you scroll through the sound. This is basically like... Um, you know, like looking through a million cross sections, or actually in this case, it's 256 cross sections of this sound, right? So you're just seeing a cross section of it. So if I click this again, you're gonna see the same wave, right? So this enables you, if you LFO the wavetable position, you'll actually go through the change in the sound. So let me just do that manually, and then we'll hook an LFO to it and see what, the, what, see what happens. Right? Does everybody get that? It's basically just playing this as the waveform, but I can change and construct the waveform differently throughout the whole time. Right? So let's hook an LFO to this and see what happens. Let's make it go, let's trigger it, and then we'll go, let's say a half. Oh, I need to. So I'm now setting the wavetable position from the start, so that's going to be the zeroth uh, table to the 256. So let's see what that sounds like. You see where these dubstep guys get it from, right? It's already starting. It's already starting to sound super gnarly, and we've done hardly anything to it. Now, with our, like our effects, you can just kind of imagine, you know, like OTT on that distortion, phaser, chorus, right? I mean, you can just start to go really crazy with it. Okay, so, and then, you know, we haven't even gotten to, into the second oscillator, right? So we can just load up another access virus thing in here. Let's say evil. <laughs> Let's see what that is. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just hook this onto here. And let's say we don't want it to go to the entire wavetable position. We could just constrain it, right? So now this is actually even going to give us really interesting results too. Because it's only going through a part of the sound. Cool. So that's kind of like the basics of wavetable. Um, basically, um, we'll, we'll, so that that's basically like wavetables in a nutshell, right? So you can kind of download these wavetables that people have made, and actually Serum comes with a bunch, and you could just even play around with that, right? <clears throat> now. If you want to get more advanced, we can actually create our own wavetables, okay? And it's not as crazy as it sounds, and it's just kind of like a whole different part of the software. So let's get into something like that. So at first, I'm just going to load up, let's say, our basic shapes, right? So now we just have, you know, kind of what we started this with. Watch what happens when I play through this with the wavetable position. Right, so it's just kind of going through really kind of just, there's no, there's a lot of popping going on, right? Because they're not sort of transitioning into each other. They're just kind of popping on one and off. I'll just go to octave zero. Now, if I click this little arrow key right next to it, watch what happens. It goes into this kind of like wave editor, right? And this is this total like other mode to this software that kind of gets more into like additive synthesis. So a lot of people just use it for the subtractive stuff and the wavetable stuff and that's totally cool. But if you want to get really under the hood on this software and just get into the really, really crazy stuff, this is sort of where it's at. So 
let's just say I load up like, this is one of the wavetables, right? And now I have all these wave editing tools, right? So let's just say, let me actually just exit out and I'm gonna take off the wavetable position for a second. So now we're just playing a triangle wave, right? Really basic. But what happens, what happens when I go into this mode and I just change like one thing here? Let's just say I just do that. Already I'm getting a totally crazy different sound. Watch what, what, watch what happens when I keep doing it. So you remember how I was talking about DMS analog waves and how I really like those? Well, this is a way to just get totally your own waveforms like in like two seconds, right? I mean, you could just make totally crazy stuff. So like, you know, I mean, you could make, you could make a square wave with a triangle wave, right? You know, I mean, that's kind of just this weird hybrid of stuff. You could have um, these kind of weird waveforms in there. You hear how like timbrely I'm getting just like totally different results just kind of by screwing around, you know? Or you can even noise it up. That's going to start to sound like really FM, like frequency modulation synthesis. Right, so you're just getting totally, totally crazy results with that, right? <clears throat> now, what happens when... It, let's just say you wanted to just kind of create and like just, you know, just make a bunch of different waveform shapes, right? Let me just actually, let me just, uh, I'm just going to kind of get rid of some of these waveform shapes and we'll just kind of, maybe we'll start with a sine wave, this kind of crazy one that we did, and then maybe this one, and we can even click plus, and then we could just kind of iterate from here, you know, we could just do a bunch of different things. I don't know where I'm going with this, right? But it's just kind of like, hey, let's just see what kind of crazy little sounds we make for a second. So here's here's what we came up with just in a couple of seconds. Okay. Now that's interesting in and of itself, but like we're interested in like making the sound change and move all the time, right? So what I'm gonna do, I just shift collected, uh, shift selected all of them, and what I'm gonna do is morph crossfade. Now, what did that do? You can see down here, now it goes one to 256. When we go back to our main screen here, <laughs> we have created basically what we saw in the access virus, right? So check this out. Right, so you can already kind of see the power of this. I mean, this is just gonna get kind of crazy if we just keep going. Now, to even take this to the next level, <clears throat> if I click this little button here, it will actually take what I have in each of these waves and create an FFT, which is a fast Fourier transform. What I'm looking at right now is the various harmonics in each of these sounds, right? So if I do that with the sine wave, does anybody know what we're gonna get? We're just gonna get one little wave, right? Because a sine wave is just that one harmonic. Now, I can now go in and just start drawing more harmonics in here. Check this out. Right? So as I'm just kind of creating more or less harmonics, I'm just kind of dragging in, right? I'm going to create much more complex sounds. Check this out. Right? And you could just keep iterating for these too. I mean, I think I've kind of maxed out these waveforms because I'm at 256, but you could do, this, do the iterative process um, that I was doing before, right? So that's a whole nother way of just getting these crazy sounds. Any questions on that? I know this, this is kind of like where we're kind of delving under the hood and I think it's departing a little bit from sort of traditional synthesis. So please uh, let me know. What kind of questions do you have?
We have radio silence. <laughs> Everybody's getting it. Another really cool thing that you can do, <clears throat> I'll just go back to my basic shapes. Or actually I'll just I'll go to one of my one of my tried and true. Uh, let's see, what can we do? What can we do? So you, what another really cool thing that you can do, uh, just to make even crazier sounds, you know, if you're not into like drawing this stuff in and look, I don't blame you, because that's like that's just crazy stuff. Oh, by the way, before I do get into that, there's also a place where you could enter formulas, okay? So if you really want to get away from like making music and you want to get into like the math of like, you know, all these like periodic, you know, symbols and stuff like that, I mean, you could go to town and just kind of put in cosine, you know, and sine values in there for as much as you want. And you could come up with some really, really experimental stuff. Not really my thing necessarily, but like, you know, that is there for you if you want to like screw around with that. Okay, so now we have just one of our, uh, you know, Oberheim saws, right? So what I can do, and something that we've been doing before, I'll remove all this stuff, and we'll just kind of try to change the sound. So uh, we'll have these kind of like crazy um, uh, uh, modu modulation things in here. These warp menus um, will also change the fundamental waveform in a lot of different ways. So check this out. You can actually take, let's say, maybe we'll take the frequency modulation from the sub oscillator. So I'll click that right now, and we'll turn on our sub. I'll just make this octave zero for now, <clears throat> and let's see what happens when I turn up the sub with this. I kind of like that right there, actually. I'm going to actually link an LFO to this so that it'll automate that. And I liked right where it was, like right around there. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'll go up here to my menu and I can actually render the oscillator A warp. Ah. Uh, I can't do it for frequency modulation. I always forget that. But what I can do, I can resample to oscillator A. And now what it's given me is it's given me a, another wavetable of that movement that I just did. I basically rendered down the oscillator to make a new oscillator. And now, of course, I still have the frequency modulation on there, so it's kind of like affecting it double, which is crazy. Let me just take this off, um, or bypass, bypass, or I'll just turn it down. Nothing too interesting, actually. <clears throat> Let's maybe try that again. We can also just render this again, resample to oscillator A again. <clears throat> Let's see what this is. Cool, so we're getting something really crazy. Let's, re let's resample it again. All right. So you can kind of see that you can just keep iterating with this, right? And of course, we have two oscillators, so we could get some really, really insane sounds just by doing this. <clears throat> let's see what else we have. We can copy the oscillator B to A, so we can uh, kind of... Oh, I meant to I meant to copy B or A to B, but okay, fine. We we're working with this now. Let's see what this is. Okay, cool. So let's get 
Let's get some modulation in here. I'll maybe throw it on the drive. We like the drive. What I'm actually going to do, I'll show you the different uh, warp modes actually. So check this out. This is like, there's all these like really, really crazy things in here. So you can see what it's doing there. It's like flipping the waveform. I'll just turn oscillator B off for the moment. And maybe I'll turn the filter off just so you can really see what's going on. Check out some of these other ones. This is another area where Wavetable and uh, Serum just kind of diverge a lot. Um, Wavetable does have a couple of these. Um, let's see, what does it have? It has the <clears throat> the main warp modes that Wavetable has is FM. It has Classic, which is like pulse width and sync. And then it has Modern, which is warp and fold, which is kind of like what we're seeing right here. Or in maybe one of the other ones, it's kind of like uh, you know bending it and stuff like that. That's more like a, a modern take, if you will. Um, but yeah, as you can see with with Serum, it just has a lot more of those. Um, yeah. Let's see what else. What else we have? Oh, the other thing that I wanted to show you too is Serum can actually import images into. Uh, into its wavetable. So I've got a couple of images here. I just kind of grab these like funny like producer memes, right? Like this one I thought was pretty funny. But what would this actually sound like if I brought it into Serum? So to do that, I just, uh, uh, I, I don't know if I can have both windows up. Let's see, hold on. Okay, I'm just going to drop it. I'm just grabbing the picture and it's importing. It has to be a PNG image. I'm just going to bring that in, and <laughs> this is what this image sounds like. Check it out. Uh, I'm actually going to take the warp mode off just so you can kind of hear it. So that's what this image sounds like. I got a couple other ones. I, I really think this one's pretty funny. Her boyfriend uses stock plugins. How sad. Let's pull this in. That's what this one, this one sounds like. So you can see right here is actually probably where the break in the image is. This is right where the text is. You can almost even see the text, which is crazy. Yeah, I've got another image. Uh, let's see what this one sounds like. That image is this guy. <laughs> my beats, my only friend, and me. Let's see what this sounds like. Let's pitch this sucker down and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just take this sound or this uh, image rather and try to make a usable sound out of it just as a challenge. Let's let's try it. So first off, I'm probably going to want to modulate the wavetable position just so I can get this sound like really moving, right? I'm going to go all 256 wavetable positions. And then I think uh, filtering is going to be super key. Let's see. I'll just remove the modulator so I can start from the beginning. Uh, maybe I'll just try going for something like really crazy, like maybe one of the phasers. <laughs> Why not, right? I like the sound of that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the filter here, and I think I'm going to probably want to roll off some of the high frequencies. So I'm just going to do like a low pass. A lot of the times, too, with these like crazier sounds, like you know, if you're going into this little editor and you're making some really, really crazy wavetables, oftentimes I'll kind of 
tone it down and like make it a bit more musical with the oscillator B where I just take one like r a really basic waveform, you know, like let's say, let's just put like a saw on top of this, you know, and like that'll help to kind of tone down the crazy, but then you'll hear the sawtooth in the middle of it. So it'll still kind of sound musical. I think this uh, LFO is going way too fast too. totally clipping. <laughs> I mean, say what you will, right? But it's you'll definitely get your own sound. I mean, that's the whole point of this, right? Like, you don't want to be making the same super saws that everybody's making, right? You want to kind of make like your own sound, right? I mean, that's just a couple of the things that this thing can do. I mean, it's really a beast. Uh, let's see if I just missed anything else. Uh, we talked about the morph, the spectral. Yeah. <clears throat> that was definitely the deepest sort of trickiest part of this, like kind of morphing through the wavetables and making your own stuff in here. Does anybody have any other questions? Yeah, just keep them coming. You guys all taking copious notes? <laughs> I'll talk about too, like uh, the main differences between Wavetable. In a way, like Wavetable is really sleek and minimal, and that's what I really like about it. I don't un actually end up using it that much, um, just because I've just been working in Serum for so long, and um, I just kind of have thought about like just the way that it works, like almost like my brain works that way now. You know, um, we talked about um, how Wavetable has the three warp modes. There's two LFOs in Wavetable, whereas there's eight in Serum. Uh, you can't really do the custom shapes um, that you can in Wavetable, but you can sort of bend the preset wave changes. Um, let's see, Serum can unison up to 16, which we saw, and then you can have two, um, you can have two uh, oscillators doing that. And then of course you have the hyper dimension, which gives you another seven potentially. So, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of, if you really need all that sound, it's there available for you, you know? Um, we saw that there were many more filter options available in uh, Serum. Uh, and I urged like everybody to just like, go through and play with their ring modulation and stuff like that. It's super fun. Um, Wavetable has two separate filters, uh, whereas Serum is more about having this global filter and then the filter in the effects section. So it's kind of like that's sort of similar about it. Um, and then as we've seen, like Serum's Wavetable is like super powerful. You know, as I said before, like there are a lot of people doing tutorials on this. There are people giving out sample packs. You know, like if you want to like learn from the people who have been doing it a while, just like go and download a sample pack, like kind of destruct like their sounds and how they've been kind of doing it. And uh, yeah, you can just really learn really quickly based on like how people are doing stuff that way, you know? Um, I do have some resources too. Like I found a site that has the ultimate list of free free serum presets. P paste that right now. Um, this place called Dawn Nation has like a serum class. Um, and then this YouTuber, Zen World, he has a really kind of good uh, tutorial on how to master serum. And then there's this guy, Rocket Powered Sound, who's more like EDM focused posting him too. Um, yeah, he has some good tutorials as well. Um, yeah, you guys have been super quiet the whole time. 
Any other questions? Cool. Well, yeah, again, uh, please connect with me on my social channels. Uh, it's metamither.com. You'll see all the links there. Uh, send me a line, you know, if you ever want to collaborate. Always looking to work with great producers and uh, mostly hear just good music, right? So send me your tracks and stuff. And uh, yeah, give me a shout if you like the class and uh, post it on your uh, social channels and stuff like that. It'll really help us going forward. I'll stick around for another couple minutes if uh, people have any other questions. <laughs> Akasha is listening. <laughs> Did I miss anybody's question? Thomas, I put the, uh, the it was the first link, the cymatics.fm was the link for the presets. That's a really good resource. He's kind of connected a bunch of them. You guys want to go through a couple more sounds or? We'll maybe go through, let's see. Maybe this, this pulse thing is crazy. Let's see what this is. All right, let me get to the right record enable. So on this one, um, I have this kind of LFO going uh, down and then up. So it's c controlling the sort of weirdness that you hear in the beginning of the sound. So it's kind of, it's actually controlling the pitch bend of it. And then I just have, you know, one of those DMS uh, sine waves and actually the classic sawtooth. And then not too much on it, you know, hyper dimension on there and then just a distortion. It's a pretty simple sound, yeah. You can see how it's changing the semitones uh, and the fine right there on the top. Cool. Well, anyway, uh, you guys know how to get in contact. Uh, hope to hear from some of you guys soon. I hope that you got a lot out of this. Uh, it was super fun to like teach this, guys. Totally down to do it again. So just uh, let me know if you have any questions. Send me an email. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the 343 site, I guess. Thomas is given the website right now. All right, guys, that was awesome. I'll talk to you guys soon.